welcome to another teaching session by Stream of Love. And we pray that the stream that flows from the throne room of God will immerse you in his presence and nourish you through his word. Amen. And we are glad that you're able to join us today again. And for today's session, the title is, um, Are You Overwhelmed? Now, I want to start by just sharing with you about the global scan for 2024. Now, it has stated that about 78% of the population of those that who were scanned, I mean, who went through this analytical report um, about a survey of 29,565 people across 31 countries and territories. And this uh, survey was done in July, uh, between the period of July and August, 2023. And 78% of them agree that, um, that in these times when we are living in uncertainty, uh, people are experiencing this feeling of being overwhelmed. Now, as human beings, is um, from time to time uh, that I believe that every one of us do feel overwhelmed. And um, the crust of the matter is how do we handle in these times when we get or we, we start to feel overwhelmed? These feelings of being overwhelmed comes from time to time, but the ultimatum is bringing this feeling of being overwhelmed to someone who is able to handle it, someone who is able to reverse that feeling of being overwhelmed into something of being in a state of being overjoyed in a state of being consoled, comforted, and assured that despite what can be happening around in this uncertainty, he is there to help us. And that is what we want to look at. Now, if we very quickly look at the book of Habakkuk, chapter 3, uh, verses 17 to verses 18, uh, this is a very familiar scripture portion. We want to just touch base on this and then move on to other scriptures to understand in the times when we are being overwhelmed, what can we do? Now, Habakkuk states, uh, I'm reading from the complete Jewish study Bible, and it reads, for even if the fig tree doesn't blossom and no fruit is on the vines, even if the olive tree fails to produce and the fields yield no food at all, even if the ship vanished from the ship pen and there are no cows in the stalls. <clears throat> now, this particular verse itself in Habakkuk, just this one verse, it describes uh, the state of being in anguish that this particular person is going through feeling this feeling of being overwhelmed, hopeless, desolate, and there seems to be no future. And I think sometimes we can resonate with this, uh, what is happening here, because as we go through life, there'll be different junctions in our life that when we make certain turns, we come to a point not knowing what is going to be the next step. And we get perplexed and we tend to lose our confidence in life and we tend to wonder what is going to be next law. Now, if you have been going through that or you are going through that, I want to say that I have been through that and there are times from time to time I do experience that. And, and I know that it's part of growing, developing to become a better person of who God wants me to be in terms of being totally independent upon him. Now, being overwhelmed is described clearly in this verse. Everything seems to be hopeless, everything seems to be desolate, and there seems to be no future. But then in verse 18, it says, still, I will rejoice in Adonai, I will take joy in the God of my salvation. Scripture says so clearly that even then, now this is hopeless, yes, it is hopeless, but yet then, I will rejoice in Adonai. Now, sometimes we'll be wondering, but how is it possible? 
How is it possible to rejoice in the Lord God Almighty when everything seems to be hopeless? Now, Psalm 61. Psalm 61, we will see the situation where David will be. David at a time when he's far away from his home and he's far away from safety, he will cry out to God. He will cry out to God, you know, he loses strength in his heart. He's in despair and he seems to be struggling within him and his heart is overwhelmed. And why is Habakkuk able to say, still I will rejoice in Adonai? The answer we will be able to see in Psalms 61. Now, just looking at verses, the first three verses of Psalm 61, reading from the Amplified Version, it says, Hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. Now, this particular verse, listen to my prayer, hear my cry, is a cry of despair. In moments of anguish, the only one who will be there present with you and with me is the Lord God Almighty. Because many a times when tears roll down and when we are heartbroken, if there's someone that we can approach to without uh, being judged, condemned, ridiculed is the Lord God Almighty himself. Because even though we can share it with a loved one, with a friend, with your partner, there's consolation words they can give. But the one who can help you, the only one who can help you is the Lord himself. And verse two reads, from the end of the earth will I cry to you when my heart is overwhelmed and fainting, meaning to say that no matter what happens in my life, Lord, even if it's at the end of my life, it's the end of the earth, I will still look up to you and cry out to you, cry out to you to say that my heart is being overwhelmed and my heart is fainting. I'm losing strength in life. I have no more courage to move forward. I do not know what is going to be the next step. I have lost focus, Lord. Nothing seems to be working. Everything seems to be hopeless. And every hope that I built for the future has been crushed. Now, what's next? And you can see Habakkuk experienced that. And we also see David experiencing that. And what is the next line that David says? He says, lead me to the rock. To the rock that is higher higher than I. Now, firstly, David acknowledges that he is in a situation where his heart is overwhelmed. Now, the first step for us to be restored by the law is to accept when we are discouraged, when we are overwhelmed, when we are sad, and when we feel hopeless. Believing that the Lord is able to restore and replenish your strength is faith. But coming to him as you are, telling him exactly how you feel, is accepting the state that you are in, but looking through the eyes of faith into what God has. And that is what exactly David was doing. He describes his state, that he is overwhelmed. He's fainting. He's in a hopeless situation. He's scared. He's in anguish. But then he says, lead me to the rock. Not lead me to the person who will be able to give me a solution. But lead me to the rock that is he himself who is higher than David. In other words, higher than David's situation. In the complete Jewish Bible, it says, set me down on a rock far above where I am now. David accepts that he is in a situation and he's placed in a rock that is beneath a ground level. 
and is looking up to say, Lord, set me down on a rock far above where I am now. That means bring me to where you want me to be. You see, coming to the Lord to say, Lord, bring me to where you want me to be can be hard for some people because when we want to say, Lord, bring me to where you want me to be, there might be things that we will have to give up. But the process is assured because when the Lord leads you into what he has for you, he wants you to enjoy. He ensures that he is there with you in that journey. He's not going to leave you. He's going to be with you. And that's why the Bible says, God is not a man to lie. Now, human beings, when they make a promise, they're not able to fulfill it. And there are times that we get hurt, we get offended, we get upset. We experience our own meltdowns. But the assurance is one thing, that if it is of the Lord, the Lord will know how to make it succeed. But if it is of men's strength, it's better to fail rather to be involved in it and then you get heartbroken. Now, the Lord knows the future. And why do I say this? Because in that very Psalms 61, verse 3, it says, where David says, For you, you alone, have been a shelter and a refuge for me, a strong tower against the adversary. Now, David recollects the past interventions by the Lord. And that is why he's able to say this with all audacity, with all confidence, that Lord, you have been a shelter. It's not that you are going to be my shelter or you are my shelter. He speaks in the past, recollecting, saying, you have been a shelter for me in the past. You have been a refuge for me in the past. You have been a strong tower for me against the adversary in the past. And therefore, with all assurance, Lord, with all confidence in you, I know that when I cry out to you, when I'm being overwhelmed, when I feel hopeless, when I feel the stock market is crashing, when I feel my relationships are melting away, my family is no more there, my finances are dry. I have lost my job. I do not have a house. What am I going to do next, Lord? Lord, in the midst of all this confusion that you can be experiencing, look up to him and recollect what God has done for you in the past. Because every time you look and remember what he has done for you, faith starts to build in. Confidence start to build in, recollecting what God has done for you. And in the Jewish version, it says like, for you have been a refuge for me, a tower of strength in the face of the foe. It's a reputation and it's still an endorsement to say, Lord, you are a refuge. No matter what happens. And that is what in Habakkuk we see. When it's written, still, regardless of what is happening, Lord, even if the fig tree does not blossom, there's no fruit on the vines, and the olive trees fail to produce, there are no, the, the fields, do they do not yield any food, and then the ship vanish, and then there are no cows. Regardless of all of this, Lord, I will rejoice in you. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. Simply because when you recollect who Adonai is in your life, who Elohim is in your life, who is the God of Jehovah, who is he? Who is the God of Israel? Who is the God of your life? Now, when you start recollecting this, you build confidence in your life to trust God more. Now, if he, can, he has done it once, he can do it again. And he has been doing it all throughout history and he has been doing it all over again even in our current times and he's able to do it all over again even in the future now there are times when I do as I mentioned earlier to discourage get overwhelmed and every time I experience this 
an occasional uh, meltdown or feeling being overwhelmed, I always run back to the cross. I applaud my heart at the cross and tell him exactly how I feel. Because the Lord is not going to question you of why are you feeling so sad? Why are you feeling so overwhelmed? Why are you feeling so hurt? Now, he created you and he knows exactly your make. He understands you. And similarly, in my life too, I always have, have bragged about this fact that the Lord, he knows, he understands my make because he created me. He knows why a single teardrop falls. He knows why my heart beats flutters. He knows why my strength fails. He knows exactly everything, even when I do not articulate it to him. But when I run to the cross and pour my heart and sit with him in his presence, he comes to cradle me. He comes to lift me up because he knows my make. He knows exactly what to say, when to say, how to say it so that I can be built. I can be encouraged. Now, if God has done it for me and he's doing it for me, with all certainty, I can say that he is able to do it for you. Just like how he did for Habakkuk. Just as how he did for David. Just as how he's doing for me. He's able to do it for you. And the key, the key to overcome being overwhelmed is running back to the cross. Running back to the cross and recollecting what God has done for you. When you recollect what God has done for you, just as what David did, the Lord himself will lead you to the rock that is greater than you are. And when he leads you to that rock, he will be able to engage you into what he wants you to do or wants you to have. Because in verse 19 of Habakkuk, it says, Elohim Adonai is my strength. He makes me swift and sure-footed as a deer and enables me to stride over my high places. When God brings you to the rock that is greater than you, that is the Lord God Almighty himself, he will know how to build you, how to strengthen you, how to gird you up and prepare you for all the good things God has for you. Because your future and my future is in the hands of the Lord Almighty. We do not own our life. We do not own our times. We do not own our very next second. But he who has created you is able, is definite to ensure that he leads you to where he intends you to be so that you will be able to enjoy what God has for you. Because the Bible says the Lord has good plans for you. His thoughts are higher than your thoughts and his ways are higher than your ways. So for all those of you who are watching this, I want to encourage you that the Lord is able to do a new thing despite the overwhelmed feeling that you're experiencing, despite being anguished, being in, in a moment of being feeling desolate or hopeless or with lots of questions about what is going to be next, Lord. The Lord has you. He has your back. And he will, he will definitely bring you to the rock, which is greater than you. And in that place, he's able to teach you, nourish you, encourage you, and restore you. For all that you have lost, God is able to do much, much more. So I pray that this teaching that will encourage you and it will enable you to spend some time to recollect what God has done in your life. Because the more and more and more you recollect, you are going to remember the goodness of God. And as you remember the goodness of God, when you start to worship and thank him for all that he has done, it is going to break loose whatever that is that you are being entangled in and God is going to make a way for you. So be blessed. And until we see you again, I pray that the Spirit of God will continue to plow your heart with all that we have heard today and will lead you to the rock, which is greater than you. God bless you. Bye-bye.